Hey there fellow Heroes fans, welcome to the first audio edition of Watching the Eclipse. Now, if you're new to the channel or you just found this uh, video by searching for Heroes, let me give you a little background on what exactly this is. I am currently writing a column on ComicRelated.com called Watching the Eclipse. Now this, uh, this is an old column that was written during the airing of Heroes when it was originally on the air by some of my uh, fellow contemporaries. I have revived the column uh, in this past week as I am going back and re-watching all the episodes of Heroes starting from episode 1 all the way through to the end and every weekday, Monday through Friday, I am writing a, a column entry for each episode that I watch. So this first week I've done column entries for episodes 1 through 5. And then every Saturday, I'm going to be right here on this audio version doing kind of an overview of the past week's episodes and talking about a, a few other facts and tidbits and, you know, who, who knows what else I'm going to toss in here. Maybe uh, character bios, maybe, uh, I, I don't know, ancillary stuff like uh, some of the NBC comics that they did on the website, other, other stuff like that. So we'll just see what happens. Uh, see how this goes and hopefully you enjoyed this extra to the column and if you haven't checked out the column please go to comicrelated.com up at the very top you can click columns and one of the top entries should be watching the eclipse and you can click that and find all the previous installments including my introduction column um, so check that out and then come back here and listen to some more audio as well right here on comic related's youtube channel and please subscribe as well while i'm at it but uh, anyway uh, this the reason I'm doing all this, the reason I'm going back and watching rewatching Heroes and doing the column and doing this audio piece is because Dynamite Entertainment announced at San Diego Comic Con this year that they are reviving Heroes as a comic book once again, kind of picking up where the show left off. So I thought it would be a fun idea, and I think I've timed it right to about when I think they're going to release the comic. Um, to where I should be able to get through the entire series by the time that happens, so I'll just transition everything from talk about the show into talk about the comic. And then from there, you know, obviously it won't be a daily thing, it'll be more of a monthly, maybe maybe I'll find something to do weekly, we'll see. But for now, Monday through Friday and then Saturdays for the audio. So, I was a huge fan of Heroes, as I'm sure many of you were. Uh, when it first came on, I was just hooked. I actually did not see the first episode when it aired. I had to watch it later in the night. Um, I can't remember if I if I DVR'd it or if they replayed it like on Saturday or something. I don't remember, but I missed it for whatever reason. I don't think I was home, and uh, so I heard all the talk about it, all the buzz and everything, and uh, when I did see it, I was I was totally hooked and uh, couldn't get enough of it. Um, I know at one point I lost track of it and had to start watching it. They started replaying it on, um, oh, what channel? What Was it the Sci-Fi channel? They started replaying it, like, on Fridays or something like that. And I had to start watching it then because I don't remember what the reason was, but for some reason on Mondays I, I wasn't able to watch it always. So, uh, yeah, I started watching it that way. But if you're not familiar with Heroes, it began in 2006... Uh, September 25th, I believe, was the first air date, and it ran through February 8, 2010. It ran for four seasons. Most people, uh, most fans would say that the first season was amazing, and the following seasons kind of let them down. Me, personally, I'm one of the few that loved it through and through, all the way to the end, and uh, can't wait for it to come back in any format. I would love to see it come back as a TV show, but I'll take the comic if I have to. There were 77 full episodes that aired, and this I did not write in my column, but uh, actually there was an unaired pilot that we never got to see that went into some other uh, details about some of the characters, like DL. Uh, it showed him escaping from prison, and they, they decided that that was unnecessary. We didn't really need to see that. And they're, they're pretty much right, because it was all in the dialogue anyway, so we didn't really need to see it play out. But I would love to find that. Uh, I don't know if it's on the DVD collections or not, because I'm watching it through Netflix. And actually, I'm alternating Netflix and Hulu. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure if uh, 
if it's on the DVD set or not, but I'd, I'd love to see it. Anybody out there that, that has watched the pilot, I'd love to uh, to hear about it, so let me know. But anyway, uh, like I said, it started in, in September of 2006, and the uh, first episode was called Genesis. Uh, yeah. Apropos for the, uh, <laughs> for the first episode, I guess. And the first episode opened with the text... In recent days, a seemingly random group of individuals has emerged with what can only be described as special abilities. Although unaware of it now, these individuals will not only save the world, but change it forever. This transformation from ordinary to extraordinary will not occur overnight. Every story has a beginning. Volume 1 of their epic tale begins here. And this is... Season 1 is Volume 1, and they every episode was a chapter, so this is Chapter 1, Genesis. And um, that really was very true, because the way the series played out, in the beginning anyway, was that it was a very gradual progression as you were introduced to these various characters, and they um, started slowly uh, getting... Um, revelation that they had abilities um, beyond you know normal people and uh, some of them believed it at first and didn't really have it manifest and then it did manifest uh, like in the case of Hero and Peter um, they both thought that they had these abilities but it, it didn't manifest immediately and we got gradually to that point um, in this first episode as I wrote in the column we got introduced to all well not all but most of the main cast. We got introduced to Peter Petrelli, his brother Nathan Petrelli. Um, Peter, Peter is a, um, a hospice nurse. Nathan is a congressional candidate. Um, we got introduced to Claire Bennett, who is the cheerleader, her father being Noah Bennett, otherwise known as HRG, which was the big mystery. Horn rim glasses is what that stands for. And, and I remember everybody called him HRG. What's HRG up to? You know, what's his uh, stake in all this? Because we don't learn any of this in these first five episodes. We just see him interjecting himself in the lives of some of these characters, but we don't know why. We know he has a friend in, in the um, mysterious man that can erase minds, who we don't even get his name in his first five episodes. And really, he never has a name throughout the entire series. He's referred to as the Haitian later on because he's from Haiti. Uh, but... In, this, in these first five episodes, we don't even know his name at all. We just see him occasionally with Bennett when Bennett needs him. And uh, we still don't know why Bennett's doing what he's doing. We just know that he is aware that his daughter has abilities. And um, we know that uh, he knows of others. And he's tracking them somehow. So, um, we also got introduced to, of course, Hiro Nakamura and... Ando Masahashi, and uh, these two, they're, they're the uh, comic relief of the series, if there is comic relief in it, and of course there is with Hero, Hero is the lovable, affable, uh, kind of a sidekick, but he's actually one of the uh, main characters, one of the uh, top heroes in the future, uh, no pun intended, but as we learned in the, uh, the fourth and fifth episodes, uh, future hero comes and gives a message to Peter, which um, he, this is where the famous phrase for the show "Save the Cheerleader, Save the World" came from. It came from uh, that in the beginning of episode five, I believe, is the first time he actually said it, and he said it to Peter on the uh, subway before he disappeared, and we didn't see him for a while after that. Um, but that kind of just kickstarted things into the right direction for them to save the world. And uh, the the cool thing about the way they organized this whole series is because every all the characters started converging in in one spot. They were all drawn to the same places, like uh, Hiro and Ando. They're in Japan, but you know Hiro teleports to New York, and that's how he finds out about this big explosion coming that Isaac is Isaac the painter, which I'll get to in a minute, has painted and. Uh, you know, so he and Ando head to Las Vegas, and it just so happens at that point, Nathan Petrelli and Nikki are, Nikki Sanders and her son Micah are in Las Vegas, 
and you know it's just you see these kind of connections and them kind of uh, coming together as if destiny is pulling them together obviously um, I mentioned Nikki and her son Micah these two they probably have the uh, one of the most reviled um, subplots in the entire series of heroes I think at first, it was like, oh, everybody loves Hero. Everybody, you know, relates to Peter. Uh, we love to hate Nathan. Um, Claire is cool because, you know, she's she can't be killed. She's, you know, pretty much indestructible. You got all these different cool characters. Isaac, you know, okay, he's a drug addict, but he can paint the future, so that's pretty cool. But then you have Nikki, who, well, I mean, she's a webcam uh well, she likes to, uh, she makes money off the webcam, <laughs> we'll leave it at that. And, um, she, uh, her, her ability is that she has this doppelganger in the mirror that is apparently doing vicious things when she blacks out, like killing people and ripping them to shreds. So, it's like, okay, this character is just, she's kind of boring, she's kind of plain, she's, and her powers make her kind of more of a villain than a hero. So it's, you know, you, you kind of like Micah because he's this super smart kid. If you've ever watched the, the show My Wife and Kids, um, you know who Micah is. And, you know, he's just born for that kind of role. Um, but, yeah, their, their whole subplot, though, because they're kind of more on their own throughout this entire thing. Even though they interact with other characters, they, them and uh, DL, her husband, kind of keep to themselves. And it just gets kind of boring. Um... In later seasons, there's another couple of characters that do the same thing. But um, speaking of other characters, I did mention Isaac. Like I said, he has he thinks he has to uh, get high on heroin to paint the future. And uh, in later episodes, he learns that that's not exactly the case. But right now, that's what he thinks. He thinks he's painting the future. His girlfriend Simone, she's she just thinks he's uh, kind of on a trip all the time, and, um, of course, Isaac plays an important role in this first arc, but not a, not a, uh, lengthy one, we'll, we'll say that, because we haven't got to that point, uh, in these first five episodes, but, um, we also have Mohinder, who is the son of Chandra Suresh, who has been studying these people with abilities, and Mohinder, um, travels to New York after his, after he finds out his father has been killed, and, he starts to pick up this research, and at first he's very eager. He, he's trying to connect to his father through this research and uh, discover these abilities for himself, and then he starts to doubt the existence of these abilities. Um, and at this point, by episode 5, he, he doesn't really believe anymore. He's ready to go back home, but things keep pulling him back there. He, he, they keep tying him to there, especially the, uh, the name Siler. Now, anybody that's watched Heroes, you know who Siler is, but at this point, we've never seen his actual face. At this time, I don't think they had even cast the uh, actor to play him, because all we saw was this uh, shrouded in shadow figure that would pop up every, every once in a while. His name would pop up uh, in Suresh's files or in Partman's uh, police uh, investigation, so on and so forth. Uh, speaking of Partman, he was introduced in episode 2, and he can read minds. Now, Partman, Matt Partman was a character that um, became beloved to fans, and it was mainly because uh, the actor that played him, Greg Grimberg, was very vocal on social media, and he would speak out to fans and interact with them and, and uh, you know keep them hyped about the show and everything, and so people loved his character because they loved him. And his character was one of the uh, less active heroes. He was just kind of there. He never really, until late, much later in the series, he never really totally embraced what he could actually do. So he was just kind of there and you'd hear thoughts every once in a while. Um, he tried to do the right thing, but he, he got this reputation of being kind of, uh, kind of soft. And um, that wasn't the case. He was really a lovable, likable character who was just overwhelmed by this, this ability and everything around him uh, that was going on. 
that was pulling him into all this. But uh, it was a, it, still very interesting. Uh, it's always interesting when you can read abilities, and it, it brought Bennett and the Haitian right to him. Uh, they they were after a few select people, and he was one that they really wanted to uh, get hold of, and 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 study and learn from and watch. So, um, yeah. But you know, this these first five episodes brought us from introducing the characters to seeing them grow just a little bit, kind of come into their abilities a little bit see them exhibit the abilities, admit that they have these abilities, except for Nikki, she's still kind of fighting it. Nathan finally admitted that he had, we actually saw him fly in an episode, I think it was five when we actually saw him full on fly. We saw him fly in an uh, earlier episode when he caught Peter, but not not to the extent of, okay, there. this is not just plausible deniability, now we know he can fly. So. Um, so we, we saw that kind of advance where they started coming into their powers and everything and we started seeing the, the threads of the, uh, the plot behind the, the story behind them coming together we had Siler uh, which is tied to uh, Parkman through the police investigations he's tied to Mohinder through Suresh's research he's tied to Peter and Isaac through the paintings and he's tied to Hero, who transported to the future and saw Isaac um, with his head cut off. So, and that's kind of what Siler does, and we don't know why he does this at this point. So, all we know is that this serial killer has some kind of ability. Uh, we've seen him take gunshots and then just disappear. But we don't know why or what's going on. We see the shadow figure coming towards the, uh, standing over the, uh, bloody body of the cheerleader in the painting that Isaac and Peter painted. So, you know, we're starting to see that whole thing come together. We have this explosion that Isaac drew on the, or painted on the floor that Hero transported to the future and actually experienced. So we have that tying them together as well. And, uh, so, I mean, there, there's different things. You have Bennett, who's in and out of each one of their lives and everything, watching them, studying them, and uh, there are other connections that, we, that we're not even aware of at this point, but it's just, it's very interesting to see it unfold. We start off with those introductions. At the point that episode five ends, we have Peter and Isaac on the phone with Hero Nando, so everything is starting to come together as they're trying to figure things out. They know they have to save some cheerleader somewhere to save the world from this big explosion. That's what they think, anyway. And somehow Siler's tied into that. So, a lot of things happen in these first five episodes that brought us to this point. And it's uh, been pretty cool to watch it unfold once again and see how how uh, brilliantly it was uh, written in this first season. To see how um, each character was developed and, and uh, got equal screen time and still connected with each other but not so forced that it felt like oh well they're just making this work they're just making these two characters fit together no they actually had these connections uh, throughout that made sense that could happen in real life and I think that's what the uh, the appeal of heroes was was that you could be any of these people at any given time you could be any of these people in any walk of life so that that made these uh, these abilities that they had seem more real to us in this first season. Uh, you know, once we get beyond that, things get a little bit more into the sci-fi and supernatural, and it starts to become a little bit more unbelievable. Um, and I think that's where people, a lot of people, fell off. But at this point, everybody's loving this series. At this point, this uh, this series has become a runaway success. I think it was after. Well, I'll talk about that next week. Never mind. But um, yeah, it was a runaway success. It was a success. It was bringing in 13.5 million viewers every week. I mean, it wasn't huge, like lost at this point, but um, it was getting there, and everybody was loving it. A couple of things that I didn't mention in the column that I thought were interesting. One of the producers, producer slash director on the show, Greg Beeman actually started a blog 
the day after the first episode aired, on September 26, 2006, he started a blog called uh, Beaming Beamin, and he started talking about the show, the production of the show, the cast and everything, uh, starting with episode one, Genesis. Um, he showed, you know, cast photos, or cr actually crew photos of, you know, them having dinner and everything, and, uh, you know, he talked about his uh, history working on Smallville, and his transition over here, and his, uh, his contemporaries and everything, um, so it was, it was really interesting, they actually filmed the pilot back in March, the, the unaired pilot, um, and, uh, they started putting the team together, and he, he would continue blogging. This was a this was a haunt for a lot of Heroes fans. He would continue blogging up till 2009, to maybe I think 2009 was the last. I'm I'm not sure. I'd have to uh, have to look at it, but uh, through most of the season, I mean through most of the series, he would uh, blog about each episode or, or different things going on with the show, and uh, you know show cast photos like he showed a after episode two he showed you know cast photos of the the actors that played um, Claire and Brody uh, just you know behind the scenes stuff uh, showing some kind of some of the crew and everything and just talking about the episodes like I said um, so it was, it was a pretty cool supplement to the show for those that like to embrace you know all that culture around the show and um they also launched a viral site that would post uh, updates and everything called NinthWonders.com. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, it's because it's the name of the comic that Hero finds when he transports to the future in New York, and, and he picks it up, and it's drawn by Isaac, and uh, it has him and Ando in it and shows him kind of what he needs to do. Uh, so they actually made a website for the comic, um, which... Actually, they didn't make it. Some uh, it was a fan-made thing. It says the official, unofficial fan site for Heroes. But Greg Beeman, um, he referred to it in his very first blog post. He said, "You need, you want to check out something cool and follow some stuff? Head over to uh, NinthWonders.com." And uh, you know, so that became another uh, haunt for fans of the show. They would go there and uh, you know read the updates there and everything. So. It was pretty cool. It was pretty cool to have all this culture built around the show. And uh, Ninth Wonders would have interviews and galleries and everything. Most of that site is just, it's kind of taken down. The forums are gone, the galleries are gone, interviews are gone, and uh, it doesn't, it obviously doesn't update anymore. Um, so it was just, it's, you can look at it to see what it used to look like. But uh, nothing much there anymore. But, yeah, so that's kind of where things are at this point, uh, and I've said this point like ten times now, so I'm going to stop saying this point, this point, this point, but Heroes was off to a great start uh, by the end of this fifth episode, and, you know, Peter was starting to learn that he not only could just fly, he could actually pick up powers of people that he was around, so he, he started to learn that he was a siphon, and uh, that would open the hero's possibilities uh, to the nth degree because, you know, he could do pretty much anything as long as he was right around the right person, so. Very interesting things to come as we leave off heroes for this week. So, to wrap things up, I hope you enjoyed this first audio uh, supplement to the column. If there's other things you'd like me to research and, and talk about, uh, beyond the column in these audio segments each week, uh, let me know. You can email me at brant at comicrelated.com or columns at comicrelated.com, whichever you prefer. And let me know if there's anything you'd like to know about the show that you'd like me to talk about specifically, and I'll, I'll fit it into wherever it fits in to the episodes that I'm talking about at, at a given time. Um, next week I'll talk about some of the success of Heroes as, it, as it's gotten to that point. Um, I'll be covering episodes 6 through 10 and I don't know what else, whatever else is going on at that time or that was going on at that time of those episodes airing. So uh, you can be looking forward to that but please check out the uh, daily column Monday through Friday on comicrelated.com. It's called Watching the Eclipse. Just go to the columns page and you'll find it easily there. 
uh, and I'll have links in the, sh in the notes below as well. So, And please uh, give a like to the column, subscribe to the channel, uh, leave comments, or send me direct messages, whichever you prefer. Just love to hear some feedback, and, and I'd love to hear from other fans of the show. Um, hear what your favorite episodes, favorite characters were, um, you know, what you're enjoying. Um, and if you'd like me to do like a, an overview of, of a certain character each audio supplement, um, let me know. Whatever you want, I'll, I'll try to include. I'm going to try to keep these fairly short, uh, so I'm not taking up too much of your time. But, uh, yeah, if you listen, I hope you liked it, and I hope you come back for more. So until next week, get time! Bye, everybody.